first of all, they're spent force. Um, I mean, you only have 4% of the American workforce is in manufacturing. Uh, only 12% of the labor force in the country is unionized. Most of that is in public sector unions. I think we were just talking, it's only 4% that are not in public sector unions. And of course, what we're seeing, especially with the recent Supreme Court decision, is an assault to destroy public sector unions. I live in the state of New Jersey, and this is Chris Christie's great crusade against police unions. And you're right, the cops are, are next. Uh, uh, it, it's against teachers unions. Uh, and, and the problem is that, um, you know, and, and this goes back to the destruction of the radical and progressive movements that began in World War I. Uh, so that by the time you see the rise of the new left in the 1960s, you have the AFL-CIO supporting Nixon's war in Indochina and denouncing the hippies in the street. It used to be that if you went to the coal fields of southern West Virginia, the hero was Mother Jones. Now it's Michelle Bachman. Uh, and, and the reason is because labor essentially, as you point out, Sam, essentially became a kind of junior partner in the corporate state. Uh, they made, they protected their own, and of course now, uh, you know, what they're doing is 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 making more and more concessions. I mean, for instance, new workers uh, who come into the workforce are not going to be protected, so that the old workers can be. They're shriveling up and dying. They're going down below decks. And, and, their and, and, and this is very frightening because most social movements throughout history have counted on the backbone of labor, but we don't have it. That has been taken away from the equation, um, which makes it much more difficult. And I'll, I'll just conclude by saying, let's not forget that this can go the wrong way, just as in Europe in the 1930s, it went the wrong mm -hmm. way. Right-wing populism, um, and we see it in the Tea Party, we see it in the Christian right, which is proto-fascist. It, it celebrates the gun culture. It celebrates the language of violence. It does what fascist movements do, which is funnel a legitimate rage mm -hmm. and a legitimate sense of betrayal against the vulnerable, mm -hmm. against the poor, against undocumented workers, against Muslims, against homosexuals, against feminists, intellectuals. They got a very long list of hate. <laughs> and, um, and they are bankrolled by the most retrograde forces in American society, the Koch brothers and others. And the longer you have political paralysis, which is essentially what has happened, the more you empower these extremes, and um, th there is a very dark undercurrent of violence in this country, and we cannot exclude the fact that these forces may be given life. Um, I spent two years writing a book on the Christian right called American Fascists, the Christian Right, and the War on America. I was trying to reach out to them. Um, <laughs> I come out of seminary. And these are quintessentially fascist movements in every sense of the word. And they are very powerful, and they have severed tens of millions of Americans from the mainstream. Everything they see is reflected through the lens of this very dark and perverted mm. ideology. So um, uh, I think that the breaking of labor, which was quite conscious on the part of the capitalist corporate class, uh, is something that is severely weakened us because you go into towns like Ohio and instead of a labor hall being the center of activity, it's a mega church. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rob, do you want to? You want to? I, I just would add a uh, reference. The management theorist Peter Drucker. First.